Well, hello and welcome. Some of my non-pilot friends have asked me, how do you put gas in the airplane? Is it full serve, self-serve? How does it all work? So today we're going to answer that question. Before we go flying today, I wanted to make you aware of a new device that's currently in a Kickstarter mode, and it's called Pilot Clock. And you can go to pilotclock.com, but essentially it's a small viewing device that can go by your bedside or how we use it in our flying club is just to make it visible so when pilots come in, it lets you know what are the current conditions at your airport. Everything from reported turbulence, VFR versus IFR, winds, so on and so forth. It's color-coded. And it's a quick snapshot of what's going on at the airport before you start your complete briefing. Go to pilotclock.com to get more information. Flight plan, we're going to go to Burlington. I checked the NOTAMs. Checked weather. All right, let's pick up our ATIS. Our weather. Chicago Executive Airport Information, Tango 235, Tango. Zulu weather observation, wind 260 gust 19, visibility 10, sky clear, temperature 20, dew point 6, altimeter 2979, RNAV runway 30, circle land runway 34, news lane departing runway 34, runway 30. No disturbance, runway 30, reels out of service, advise initial contact, you have information, Tango. Tango, executive ground, Cirrus 9 or 73, Sierra Delta, Hangar 5, information Tango, ready to taxi VFR to the northwest, please. CS 973, Sierra Delta, Executive Ground, runway 3, would you like 3, runway 34, runway 30, the wind is 280 at 8, gust 17. Uh, we will take uh, 34 is fine. CS 3, Sierra Delta, Roger, runway 34, taxi via runway 6, Lima. 34 via 6 in Lima, 3, Sierra Delta. Okay. So our mission today is to go get some gasoline. I'm going to be flying some people tomorrow. Executive ground five at Hangar 21. Good now. How far does it go? And uh, seven five ground cross runway two four. Why? Why do we spend all this money to go somewhere else to get gas? Well, I'll tell you why. Gas here. It's expensive. It's an executive airport, so I don't even know. It's got to be close to $8 a gallon, 7 to $8 a gallon. Okay, I'm cleared on runway 6 on Lima going to hang to runway 34. The final is clear and the runway is clear, and I am cleared to go across. So um, where I'm going, the gas will be less than $5 a gallon. So let's say there's, pick a number, $3 difference. And if this airplane burns 20 gallons a, an hour, that's a little bit high, but it's, it's a round number, and I'm paying $3 more a gallon, that means I'm paying $60 more per hour to use gas here. Now, in the spirit of safety, I'll always get gas here. I've got 60 gallons. I'm only going to need, you know, uh, 10 gallons maybe to get where we're going. All right, let's do our little check here. Left. Right, right ball, press the right, and we're going to go left ball, right, right. Line up on this line, which is 068, and we're about 065 on the compass. Good. Fine. Uh, excuse me, Lima is clear to the left. I'm turning right as I'm going to runway 34. And immediately get across this hold short line. I don't know if you can see it with the camera angle. Clear left, right. We're going straight here, and we'll do our pre-flight run-up. Executive Tower, Sears 9 or 7, 3, Sears Delta. Holding short of 3, 4, Lima 5, ready to go VFR Northwest. 9, 7, 3, Sears Delta, Executive, turn left, Northwest now. We're right 3, 4, clear for takeoff. Left to the Northwest, clear for takeoff, 3, 4, 3, Sears Delta, thanks. All right, landing light coming on, checking back. Well, the runway is clear. My final approach is clear. I've been cleared for takeoff with the left turn on course, and I've got a left to right crosswind. And my oil pressure is now down to 50, which is perfect. We're on the correct tank. Runway remains clear. Right in the center, turn my ailerons into the wind. 
Full rich. Fuel pump on. Let's go. Slow application of power. Maintain directional control. There's full power. A little bit high in oil pressure, but again, that's normal. Taking out the aileron a little bit. There's 73. Let's pull back and go flying. Okay, flaps are up at 90 knots. Yaw damper is on. Oh, I love flying. Have I ever told you that, that I love flying? Okay, we're looking for 1147, which would be my parachute is active, which is in another 100 feet. Okay, I now have the parachute as an option. 600. And I'm at 600 feet above the ground, which is both caps is available. The parachute and the flaps are up. 900 feet to go to get to my pattern altitude. I'm going to actually cross over the airport at 2,000 feet and I'll mount. So I'm looking for the center. I see the airport. I don't see any airplanes here, nor do I see any on the ground. So uh, things are looking good. I'm going to take a little bit more power out. I'm on the correct tank. My wheels are down. The wheels don't go up in this airplane. <laughs> My mixture is where I want it. And what you'll hear me say, gas undercarriage mixture prop, safety, seatbelts and doors and all, and switches, landing lights, nav lights, all of that. Burlington traffic, red Cirrus, over the top, 2,000 feet, uh, south to north, being right down one for 2-9 Burlington. Speed is coming down nicely. We're at 129 knots, going toward 119. There's the center of the airport. I don't see any airplanes here or there, so we should be good. And there's my 1800. Burlington traffic, Red Cirrus, right down 129 Burlington. Twenty-three knots. This should work out just perfect. Yep, no one's there, so that's good. Roll out here and then drop in my first notch of flaps. Full rich mixer fuel pump coming on. There's my beam point, eleven inches on the uh, power setting. I've got a 20 knot wind. It's only 4 knot on the ground. It's 20 knots pushing me this way. So we're going to go out and The good news is that means I can turn a little bit early into my base leg and the wind will help me stay. There's 98 knots. Let's lower my nose. And 97, Burlington traffic, Red Cirrus, right base, 29 Burlington. There's 100 knots, perfect. Full, full flaps. Final is clear, runway is clear. Burlington traffic, Red Cirrus, turning final, 29 Burlington. We're a little high, but that's okay, we can lose that. Five hundred. Five hundred to go. Final check. Gas undercarriage mixture prop safety switches. Start to pull out a little bit more power. Eighty-nine. Yaw damper off. I'll take it.
So to fuel an airplane, we have to get access to the nozzle and we reset this. We push this in, which disconnects it from the gear so that I can just pull this out. that on the ground there and I also have to pay for it so I'm gonna get out my little fancy dancy little credit card and lift here please turn the cart with stripe to the left it knows my tail number I push yes what fuel do I want? 100 low lead. I don't want to put jet fuel in. I'm going to enter the gallon amount. I'm going to take up to, let's say it's 60. We're going to, let's say I put in 50 gallons. Press enter. 100 low lead, 50. I'm confirming that. Please wait. Okay, just accepted that. Now the other thing I have to do is ground the aircraft. So this allows me to make sure there's no sparks. <laughs> Find some metal like the muffler and I'm grounded. Then I come back over here. I turn on the pump, which is this switch here. Then we go over here without tripping. Always a good thing. And remove the fuel cap. And now I'm gonna pick up the nozzle and let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna to have to put this down, actually. Take the cap off the new fuel nozzle and put this in here and pull. here Now we come over here and we turn off the pump. So 38 gallons. I can remove the, I heard the machine to giving me a receipt. Take this off now. And then I'll put this I pull this thing out to engage this and when I push this green button you'll see I'm going to put this back here push the green button this will start to go in Reset this to zero. Store. The store. And then come over here and get my receipt. $196, 197 
close this up to protect from weather and that's how we fuel our airplane now i've got to wait a little bit for the fuel to settle and then i'll check it for any water that might have this been in the we system check fuel we there's like five drains here i put this here and i push up and this fills with fuel down here and the color tells us the octane i want it to be blue which you can see it is I want it to be free of sediment and I want any water. And so when I pour this out, I'll pour it through the top of here and there's a screen that prevents water and sediment from getting back in the engine. But we got to drain all of our tanks, all of our drains, or sump we call it. Good blue water. I said water, good blue gas. And after we've drained the fuel, we check it. Again, we're gonna pour it through this screen back into the tank. So we know our fuel is good. All right, I'm gonna get started up and get us back on our way. If this other guy's coming for fuel, I don't wanna hold him up. And we can head back to get some uh, night landing practice in, which is the goal for tonight. Let me do a quick walk around to the airplane. Make sure it's nothing in our way up front. Everything's disconnected, fuel caps are back on. Wheels are good, the wing is good, doing the complete walk around. I always keep the flaps down in one notch so that people, when they climb on the wing, don't step on it by mistake. All right, let's go flying. So there you have it. Not too much different from fueling your car, but as with all things aviation, making mistakes can have catastrophic impact to the safety of your flight. So we take our time and follow the process. Until next time, blue skies and tailwinds.